we're going to have to show you a clip from MSNBC, the televised mental institution. Uh, this is Joy Reid, who is a neo-racist. I think she's probably uh, unwell mentally. This is the same woman who, after that shooting in Evalde, where that uh, kid shot 18 kids and I think three teachers, her show the next day, she led it by saying that he was not mentally ill, but this was only about guns. I mean, this woman is, is really, really bananas. And I know I say bananas a lot, but this woman is a basket of rancid bananas. Um, here she is talking about how the left is winning the culture war. Now note the glee she's, she expresses this with, and listen to all of the things that she describes as wins. And then you really think about it, if, if this, what she describes is the America that you wanna live in, the America that your parents wanna live in, that your grandparents maybe came here for, and what say, I don't know, maybe Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was all about. I hadn't watched in years, but I actually really enjoyed it. Although I'm not sure everybody else did. It was, to put it mildly, a celebration of the very thing the American right has turned into its latest anti-wokeness boogeyman, diversity, equity, and inclusion. The show opened with Puerto Rican singer Bad Bunny singing 99% in Spanish. Then host Trevor Noah walked and talked through a room that was diversity, equity, and inclusion in human form. The first country Americana artist to perform, Brandi Carlisle, was introduced by her wife and daughters. We saw the first trans artist win a Grammy, Kim Petras, who has a hit song with Sam Smith, the British singer who came out in 2019 as non-binary. Black acting superstar Viola Davis became an EGOT, winning a Grammy to add to her Golden Globe, Oscar, and Tony Awards. Lizzo performed with her amazing choir of many sized singers. The culture wars are over and the left won, like total defeat. <laughs> I can only imagine the heads exploding in red states. I imagine Ron DeSantis is somewhere stalking through his governor's mansion trying to figure out how to ban the airing of the Grammys in Florida and take away CBS's tax exemptions. No educational value, queer theory, black music. Ah! <laughs> It's a helpful reminder that despite the almost hysterical war the right is waging to take the culture back to the John Wayne era, they are not just losing. They literally cannot win. Actually, lady, you literally cannot win because of our founding documents. You are a racist. What you care about most is the color of a singer's skin. You also seem to care if they're fat, that counts as diversity. You're obsessed with their racial makeup and their ethnic background and their sexuality and whether they chop their genitals off. And you think that's winning? It's funny because you're on MSNBC, which basically nobody is watching anymore. It has a cultural relevance because you've got NBC behind it. So you have one of the world's largest corporations behind it. But me, on this little show that we do here with my ragtag group of people, we have more people who watch this show on a daily basis with no budget other than the one that our subscribers afford us and whatever we make on ads. And we're, we are doing something that is way more culturally relevant, actually. You're at the end of the rope. Grammy viewership, actually, uh, on a technical note, has been sinking year over year, every year, since 2011. So you tell me how you're winning. Joy Reid, tell me about that.